Well, 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 look what we have here. If it isn't it's... my old friend, the Liverpudlian himself, the Scouser himself. Top of the league. Top of the league, Mr. Darren Till. You know, there I was just a few weeks ago having a lovely dinner with my wife and kids. I get a text, Zoom, now, not tonight, not coming up, but now. And I said, <laughs> my family, I love you, but I have to drop everything. Darren needs me. He needs me to uh, to be the main attraction on his rinky dink Zoom that he does with the crazy. And you man. was the main attraction. I, I sure was. And so, you know, in the back of my mind, I said, "This is great. I've done him a solid now. He of will reciprocate." And so here we are. Last week, set up to do an interview. Darren ghost me this week. Ghost me. And so I laid on the Jewish guilt really thick. And here he is, Darren Till in the flesh. How are you, sir? What time? What time is it as well? It's late at night. Yeah, respect. you know I'm here. Uh, Always respect, respect. Is your family sleeping? Yeah, we're uh, we're on the couch, unfortunately. Okay, wait, everyone's on the uh, couch right now. Yeah, we're having our house renovated, so it's a couch job, Ariel. It's a couch job. Oh, they must be really annoyed annoyed right now. We're okay. We're happy. We're 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 one big happy family, so we're happy. Okay, uh, we're happy. Darren, lots to discuss with you. It's good to see you and your uh, your pearly whites, which are blinding me at the moment. I mean, look at those things. They're unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, we got some bad news regarding December 5th. What happened? Ariel, I just wasn't 100%. Uh, I didn't give my knee enough time to recover from the fight with Rob. You know, after the fight with Rob, I had a few weeks off. So obviously you, you get out of shape. Uh, and then when I came back, you know, I felt good. I felt ready. I, I still felt quite, because, uh, you know, when, when you're fit and you're training for a five-round fight, you don't lose that fitness so quick. But as things went on through fight camp, like my knee just deteriorated a little bit. And I just decided that I wanted to, to fight a guy like Jack. I wanted to be 100%. And so I, I wasn't ready and I had a man an injury uh, during fight camp up to Jack and you know I spoke with my coach and I said this will be the first time I've ever pulled out of a fight you know I've never pulled out of a fight and he was like you know what do you want to do I said I would like to fight he's like but then you know this this fight's you know this is like the fight you, you, you beat Jack you're still there for a title shot against you know the champion Israel he was like you know we, we've got to be 100% and he was like I don't think it's a good idea uh, to fight right now and, and to be honest this was the first time I, I gave like a mature answer I was like you know what coach I understand yeah I think we should wait so you know I'm going to carry on training to the best of my ability and just wait for the, the new year now I think that's the best uh, choice and option for myself you know I'm still young Ariel and you know we've had many conversations and you know I feel like I'm going to be soon coming up into my prime so I don't want to make no silly mistakes mm. Do you need surgery? Oh, no, I mean, the doctor that seen me after Whitaker, uh, the fight with Whitaker, he was like astonished. He was like, wow, how did you carry on fighting after that? And I was like, you know, it's just, it's not just me as an individual fighter, it's just that, that way inclined. He was like, no, you haven't got any MCL left. He was like, incredible, really. And, and then when I recovered, he was even more shocked. He was like, wow, you've made such a quick recovery. And, you know, uh, not to harp it on about it, but I was like, it's all in the mind, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, uh, I probably do need surgery in the future, Ariel, but, you know, I just, I, I didn't give myself enough time between fights to fight mm. Jack after the Whitaker fight. And that's basically what sums it up, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm gutted about it. I've never pulled out of a fight before, so I'm gutted. And, and now uh, Kevin Holland gets a great opportunity and I'm... Uh, I'm happy for him. You know me, Ariel. I'm I'm not one of these haters on other people's success. So, you know, I'm happy for him. I really am. Yeah. Um. Having to make that final call to pull out of your first fight ever in your entire career. What was that like? Like when the realization set in that you were pulling out. I think you know what I I wasn't so like I'll say this for everyone to understand because I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I wasn't so like bugged out. I was like, you know, I made a mature decision. I made a mature, a matured fighter, fighter's decision. You know, 
us fighters in MMA, we're, we're constantly, you know, the injuries we get here, and, and sometimes we fight through them and everything. You know, we, I remember even before I fought Carl, where I tore my knee, and, you know, that's that's a fight that I was just like, no, I can't pull out. This is my big break. But, you know, I can afford, I know this might sound a little bit maybe cocky on my side, or but I can afford to pull out of a fight like this and look after my health and well-being because I can't go into a fight with Jack, not a, especially a guy like Jack who's, you know, he's there now, top three, top five. I can't go in less than 100%. So it was a, it was on my part. It was just a mature decision. Mm. That had to be made. Realistically, when do you think you can return? I'm, I'm looking at like February, March. Uh, I know my teammate, Tom, Tom Aspinall, he wants to fight in like February, March. So that would be great for me and him to fight on the same show. And Mike Grundy, he's fighting in January against Nick Lentz. So, you know, we'll all be training at the same time, which is good. And what about opponent, ideal opponent for your return? We'll see. I, I want to see how Kevin does against Jack now. Uh, Paolo Costa, Robert Whittaker. Uh, do you know uh, who else? I'm, f- I'm forgetting names. Uriah Hall. Uh, who's who's Jack Array and, and Marvin Vittori? There's all there's all Joel. interesting. <laughs> Hamza. He needs to get past Leon. If he gets past Leon, he will he he has my respect, of course. But he needs to get past Leon. And I'm gonna be honest. Leon's a Brit. Now I know me and Leon have had our differences. But we're in different weight classes now. So as a Brit, I want to push him to the title. And I'm sure he wants to do the same for me. So I contacted Leon and I was like, hey, should we get some rounds of sparring in? Me, me, you and your brother. And he was like, yeah, for sure. But, uh, you know, obviously I, I done my knee a little bit now. So I'm going to lay off it. Uh, not see him for a few weeks. But I want to push Leon as, and, and, and know he wants to push me. So, you know, I'm rooting for Leon, obviously, as an English guy. But at the same time, I just don't think... Cam's that's going to get past Leon. I think Leon's got too well equipped in every area, and this is his big break. Like people keep uh, doubting him, and he keeps saying, "What more does he need to do?" And I feel like now is the time. Like a lot of people are saying he's on a win streak, and now a lot of people are saying, "Well, who's he fought?" He's fought great names. Maybe he hasn't fought anyone in the top five solidified, but you can't look past Leon as a. Everybody's like, I might tweet to you, Ariel. Your beard's a good one. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I'm happy yeah. to play along. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you can look past Leon if you're anyone in that world weight division. He's got every tool needed to be the champion. He's fought the champion. The champion has actually said that he was his hardest fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm rooting for Leon all the way, and, and I think he's got all the tools to really upset the show. I love to see the uh, the fellow Brits, even though you're from Liverpool, he's from Birmingham, coming together and, and rooting for each other. By the way, you tweet so much, you get notifications uh, on, on people liking your tweets. That must be a pain in the butt. No, because I don't, you know, Ariel, I don't tweet every day and I'm not on it every day. I, I delete it and download it. So the notifications are never off. Wait a second. You delete your app every time? Yeah, I always delete the Twitter app, yeah. <laughs> Why? I delete the Instagram and Twitter app. Why? Well, I've just been deleted off Instagram, so I'm not going to be on that for a while. I don't what know happened what's on happened. Instagram? They just, they've just they deleted me like 10 times now. <laughs> what did you do? I'm just so offensive, aren't I? <laughs> and I just don't give a f- <laughs> Wait, so you're but, off? Like they took away your account? Yeah, my uh, one of my uh, guys who works with me in uh, the, the brand, it was like, where's your Instagram going? I was like, what do you mean? And I clicked on it. It was like, You've been logged out, and I was just like, "Oh, <laughs> God, give me strength." <laughs> Maybe it's a blessing. Twenty twenty. It's not a blessing. I need to be on there. Business is calling, okay. war dog. <laughs> Business is booming for you, right? I mean, I saw your post about how you know maybe a negative thing led to a good thing, but like you have turned into a real entrepreneur. Yeah, it, just to be short and sweet here, because there's going to be some news coming out about war dog. Oh. In the next week. Okay. Yeah. And it's a bit of a negative and a bit of a positive. Yeah. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But 
it's to do with another brand. Yeah. So you can take what I'm not going to say no more. I'm not going to say no more about it. Okay. But it's, it's, it's that. So you can take whatever you want from that, but it all will be revealed. So for me, it's a bit of a negative and a positive. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see, but on the flip side, on, on the other side, Raw Dog has been amazing. Like, I can't even believe how good it's gone. And with the beer, the only slight problem we had with the beer area, and I just want to say this to all fans, supporters, and friends, family, even if I don't speak to you and you see me on this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that we had a problem at the start with the the, the the like the pricing of the Raw Dog beer. We couldn't get it quite right, and it did come out quite expensive, but we're working on that right now. Because we got so many orders and so many requests. Like people wanted to have it in Dubai, America, New Zealand, Canada, Brazil, all over Spain. And Ariel, it was so phenomenal the support. So I know I, I this brand can be this raw dog beer, especially because with the raw dog like items, lighters, clothing, it was all limited edition. So it was, you know, we brought it out for seven days and it went mental, you know, for seven days. But then we never bring it back. But with the beer, I want the beer to be like a longevity, longevity thing. Like, you know, you can even take inspiration from the way Conor McGregor runs his uh, proper 12. Like, Conor McGregor, you know, he's he's rough around the edges, but the way he treats his proper 12 is all professional. Mm-hmm. Now, Raw Dog's not the same because it's not really a professional brand. We all know where it's come from. But it can be the same, the beer. So not to go too much on about it, Ariel, because we haven't come on here to, to like, you know, a sponsored post for Raw Dog, but it's going really well and I'm very excited for the future, but we just need to get past this little hurdle in the next week, but it's a negative and a positive, so you'll see in about a week's time. Okay. Um, why aren't you cornering Mike Perry this weekend? Uh, one, he hates me, and two, he hates me. <laughs> Were you sincere? Yes, and you know I was because yeah. not a lot of people know me and you have got a great relationship. Yeah. Like, and I've got a great relationship with a lot of you guys on the other side of the octagon because even like with Dana and, and the matchmakers and, and people who work for the UFC, they, they see the way I am as a, like a person and you know, Ariel, I was being sincere. Through all the jokes and the drama and the offensive stuff, I was going to go there, corner Mike Perry, be as professional as possible, and then maybe have a fight outside with him after <laughs> it. So, you know I was sincere about that. Was it ever considered? It, one, uh, it, from my part or from his from part? From his part. Like, did they ever reach out to you I or anything? Know, I know. I didn't even know his manager was uh, Abraham or Malky. I always give them on Twitter, by the yes, way. Yes. I give everyone. No one's safe, but... They, they. I think he would have considered that I was going to go there and be sincere and professional, and and and, and ultimately get Mike Perry the win. You know, yeah. Mike Perry talks about match matchmaking. You know, I'm fighting me. He's not in a position to fight me right now. Ariel. Now, people watching now will go, "Well, Dan, you're coming from a loss. Do you know who I've just lost to? The former champion who beat Yoel twice, who's one of the best fighters in the UFC. We went the distance. It was a close call either way. He he edged it." Off a takedown, I'm fighting the elite of the elite of the elite. I'm sorry to say, I am an elite. I take chances, I take risks, and it's all going to pay off for me in the end. Mike Perry needs to break that top 10 first before he even thinks about fighting with me. And he's a lower weight class. As much as I have a lot of respect for him, right now, he's not even in touch and distance of being able to fight me. It's just the way it is. So, but with regards to the corner, I was being 100% sincere. I wanted to corner him. I wanted to speak to him. I wanted to fight fight him in the in, in the back of the UFC after his fight. But I want him to win Saturday. And I, I am always rooting for him. Even though I know deep down he hates me, I'm not bothered. You you know me. I don't get offended or anything. I couldn't give. Uh, speaking of that former champion, Robert Whitaker, I'm just curious, haven't talked to you since. What did you think of his performance against Jared? Unbelievable! I knew exact. I I I knew. I I I knew he was going to beat him. I knew Jared is is a great fighter, but Robert's better. I fought against Robert. Now Ariel, you know, I'm 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 like a my feet are firmly on the ground. I am a masterful striker. 
Robert is so good at striking. He surprised me. Okay, so he has that win. He looks great. And then Dana White says, hey. He can't beat me. He can't beat me a second time now. I didn't even get out to like, without being disrespectful, because he beat me. I didn't even come out to like third gear. If I fight him again and I put it fully on for five rounds, he can't touch me. Because of the knee? No, there ain't. Ariel, there ain't never. Ex- I've told you this a million yes, times. Yeah, yeah. Masvidal, Woodley, Whitaker, there ain't never excuses. You win, you lose. And this is a this is probably John Cavanaugh. I'll probably think this is a dig at him now, but it's totally not. He has his 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 uh, win all in, you know methods. I don't have that win or lose. But with with like I did learn a lot from the fight. So I suppose Cavanaugh's right, but I've never had that approach. It's win or lose in in my eyes. And uh, Whitaker's good man. Whitaker's really good. He surprised me. He shocked me. So I'm just curious. What do you think of this whole situation with Izzy moving up to 205? And fighting Jan and Whitaker, Dana White saying Whitaker didn't want it, which I think his words were misconstrued. What do you what do you what do you make of all of that? People, listen, this is the thing, Ariel. We we all know you've had your back and forth with Dana. People take Dana's comments so literal. Fighters get so offended when he says something. What do you give a f- for, man? How insecure? How insecure are all these fighters? Hmm. Then they start having digs at Dana. Shut the f- up. You know what you know. That's it. Dana's meant to prof- promote fights and, and say things. And sometimes people might say he's lying. Who gives a Because I certainly don't. He's the best promoter in the world. He's made the UFC what it is. Us as the fighters, of course, yeah. There's one minor problem that I always have. I think we should be paid more. Especially, you know, guys who are selling out the arenas and tours and Abu Dhabi. But that's besides the point, you know, where... Is he can do whatever the f- he wants. He's the champion. He's beat the best in the division, apart from me. I am the best. But he can do what he wants. He can move up. He can go down. He can go and suck farts out of Dana's ass for all I care. <laughs> I don't care, Ariel. Let Izzy do he what he's going to do. Do you think he Sorry? wins that 205? Yes, two 100%. I don't think he beats John Jones. I don't think he's got the tools. Quite, it's funny, man, because uh, one thing I like John, I'm, I'm a fan of John Jones. One thing I think Jones done wrong recently was sort of he was tweeting while Khabib was winning and, and he's like, I'm the guy. Yeah, I know obviously what his thoughts are, but I think he should have left it. Just let Khabib have them four weeks of, of whatever Khabib's got. Khabib's a great man and a great fighter and a great champion, but no doubt in my mind, I think John Jones is the part for found number one right now. There's just his competition who he's beat. And yeah, the PD does taint him, the, the the steroids or whatever. I don't even know what you said, what what to call that. I've never took a scoop of protein, never mind steroids. Uh, he's the best. The the, the steroids taint his, his legacy a little bit, but not as much as people say. He, he's the best. So you think he beats Izzy? Yeah, I think Jones beats Izzy, but I think Izzy, Izzy beats Jan. Okay, interesting. Um, and 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 one would think that, like I thought, if you would have beaten Jack, you could have gotten a shot at Izzy because there's no I, other. I will, uh, when the time comes, Ed, trust me, I'm 27. I will beat Izzy, but right now, Izzy's the main man. No hate. He's doing what he's doing. Congrats. Love him. Main man. Hmm. Can you even work out right now? Yeah, like, of course. I, no, yeah, of course. I, I had a, I had two injections in my knees yesterday. Oh. Yeah, so I couldn't train today, but I'm just I'm I'm going with the flow, Ariel. I'm just going with the flow, mate. Uh, I'm in no rush to do anything. And and could I and as I, you... as I said, sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. As I said, this is a time now to work on other projects, which mm-hmm. I have been doing. So, you know, uh, I'm just trying to keep occupied and just trying to work on other projects and work on myself. And I'm not trying to be all like spiritually woke because that ain't me. Fair this thing, but you know, just trying to work on flaws and strengths and you know family life that's what we should be doing yeah and actually to that point can i just ask you because uh, obviously you live in the uk and this is a tough time not only in the uk but all around the world but right now you're going through a second lockdown right tough tough time no tough Tough, time yeah what when you say tough time what are you referring to the lockdown just mentally i know a lot of people are depressed a lot of people not for me no tough time ariel ariel i live in a 
I live in a three-storied house with two cars and food and warmth and clothes and money. I ain't going through no tough time and neither are 99% of people in the UK right now. The 1% is the people who will lose. Don't, just to be real, because I am a joker on Twitter and I try to offend everyone and that's just me. But to be real for a sec, because I'm speaking, the 1% is the people who are actually losing family members, who are losing jobs, who are losing money, who, are, who businesses are closing down, stuff like that. Yeah, they are going through a tough time. But t- tough times are meant to happen as much as... Do people think... Uh, you know, I was having a conversation with my girl the other day and she was like, oh, like, I could never imagine something happening to our babies. And I said, well, you better f- prepare for it because don't ever sit there and think that you're not going to be the one that nothing's going to happen to you or your family. P- people lose children every day. People lose family members. People die every day. So don't sit there and never think stuff's going to not happen to you because it's a possibility for all of us. Tough times are meant to happen and good times are meant to happen. Now, I'm speaking like that. I've never not, I, I've I've never lost a lot of people close to me, but you, you can't have that mentality. Oh, I could never carry on if, 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 if I lost this or lost someone or something happened things happen. I watched a documentary on Netflix the other day where the father to create a new life and go off with like his affair lover killed his two children. You know what that is? This happens within the real world. So don't come at me with tough time, mate. I ain't going through no tough time. Okay. Well, I guess the question I was going to ask you, and, and you pretty much answered it there, was if you had advice for people on how to get through this, because I've been reading a lot about the youth... <laughs> Who are feeling down? Dep- it's the winter. Yeah. It gets dark early. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I actually said to my friend before. Uh, I said this second lockdown better than the first, and he's like, "Yeah, I agree with you because the first it was sunny. You remember I was out on my quads and, and stuff. Yep. I don't. Who am I to give advice here? You know, where I, I I can tell you, you know, it hasn't affected me, but you know, my 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 boss is to say Dana and stuff is they work has been happening as usual. I, I, I don't know what I'd say. I'd just say, this this is going to sound bad and, uh, you know, I'm probably going to get a, a lot of hate for it, but just shut the up and stop moaning. Mm. Just, if you've got, if you've got a warm house, clothes on your back and food, I know it sounds cliche, just shut the up. Now, I do feel sorry for the people losing businesses and I feel even more sorry for people losing relatives and, and family members due to COVID and, and stuff like that. But right now in, in the UK, it's weird as well. You've got 50% of people who are like, let's take back the UK. And, and, and you know, it's it's all a conspiracy for world order and stuff like that. And then you've got the other 50% who are like, no, masks, this, that, the other vaccine. I think both of the 50% are just idiots. <laughs> what do you want wild, me to say? It's a wild time. No, I just know. I know a lot of kids look up to you. They they of do course, whether man. you whether you, you know you know there was a famous. But that's the advice, Ariel. That's yeah. the advice. That's, that's fine. That's the advice from me. That is that is that is no one's behind me right now saying, Darren, be careful what you say. Say this. Say that. That's the advice, Ariel. Just f- get on with it. Just get on with it. And I know it's hard, and that's easy. People will sit there and go, "It's easy for you to say, Darren, because you're saying you've got all. The, I haven't got all the money for that, as by the way. No, I'm, do you know what I mean? I'm not a gazillionaire, millionaire. I'm not, not by a long shot. But yeah, I'm in a far better position than a lot of other people. People are losing business and stuff like that. But as I said to you, Dale, this shit happens. You know, where you can't be one of these people thinking bad things are never going to happen to you because bad things happen every single day, every minute, every hour. That's me advice. It's not even advice. It's just my mentality. So if kids want to take on that mentality of thinking, do it. Yeah, there was a a famous basketball player back in the day named Charles Barkley. You know Charles Barkley? Yeah, he was in the. I know him from Space Jam. He yeah. was in Space Jam. He great. was in Space Jam. Yes, tremendous yeah. movie. But he was also a great basketball player, and he had a famous commercial. Yeah, I believe so. His commercial, uh, the lo- the line that he said that stuck with him throughout his career. He said, "I am not a role model." And the whole commercial was about how I should not be viewed as a role model. I'm just an athlete who puts a ball in a hoop. But the reality is, as you know you are a role model. Athletes are viewed as role models and people look up to you and they, they try to copy what you do and say. And so yes. I know a lot of people do look up to you because you, you are such a big star over there. So that's all. I wanted to know what you were thinking about it all. Thank you for that. I, you know, I am a big star all over the world. I yes, I know. Where you are. Especially no, Dubai. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dubai. Yeah. Uh, 
I say the same thing, Ariel, but at the same time, there's a fine line of what you can do as well. And and, and being a role model com, comes with a lot of responsibilities. I didn't never ask to be famous or well known or a role model. I wanted to just be a fighter, but it comes that's that's what comes with the territory. So you asked me to give advice to these young guys all in MMA gyms now and just in the house watching and that's the advice that it's not even advice. It's just, that's my way of thinking. So take on my way of thinking. And yet it's very easy for me to sit here and say, say these things while I'm not losing businesses or losing it, loved ones close to me. But that's the reality of life, Ariel. Unfortunately, mate. So can everyone please just shut the up? But every single fighter and every single person viewing now is just going to say that until you're just a moron. Yeah, but the good news is they say that regardless of what you just said. Yeah, so I just don't give. <laughs> uh, so okay, let's end on this because I know you you want to go to bed. It's it's getting late over there. No, um, you want to talk to me? You keep me up. You talk to me. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to be respectful of your family. Um, just a couple. Of me family. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my. Um, a couple of weeks ago was the one year anniversary of your win over Kelvin Gaslam in. Uh, in New York City, Madison Square Garden. What a crazy week that was, right? Just getting you over and everything. By the way, have you ever really told the real story about how crazy it was to get over there? I feel like you've left out some details. Yeah, I have, of course. There's okay. a time and a place for that. Uh, this, is this the time? <clears throat> no. Do you want to know the truth? Yes, I do. Do you want to know the truth? Yeah. Yes. So basically, Ariel, yeah, I've got a bit of police background in England. And in Spain, we all know why. Yes. <laughs> but this is exactly the truth. Now, when you have to fill out your forms here to travel to America, like your acro forms, my girlfriend filled mine out and she didn't know all the information. So she filled in the information incorrectly. I can't remember when she did this. So when the US government look into that, that automatically, no matter what, let's say you say, Let's say they ask you a question like, uh, was you involved in this, blah, blah, this, that? And you answer no, and you was. You know, let's say it says on your like police background or something like that, then that automatically declines you for a visa because it's happened with some of my friends. So you're all automatically then, I think it's like five, ten years, you're not getting a visa. So that's why I say to you, how much power the UFC must have. So now we're in the process, we're 50% there to be getting it sorted. I've got all my forms, I've got everything filled in. Uh, I'm an early day. I'm I'm making myself sound like a really bad person. Your police no, backgrounds no, no. and that. I'm I'm not like some narcos Ariel. No, no. <laughs> it, it's just you know it was the form that was filled in wrong. And it would have been okay for the Jack fight, even though that was in Vegas. Yeah. Okay. They, they were they were in the process of sorting it. They said it would gotcha. have been tight. It. I know the girl who works for Dana. She's like did it. The visa, whatever she yeah. does, uh, I won't say her name, but she's very helpful. She knows her stuff. She's clever. And uh, she said we would have just made it. Maybe, maybe not. But they were working on it. You know, you, you, you have to take this stuff, what the UFC do for you, into consideration as well. Eh? You know, it can't all be bad press towards Dana. Oh, Dana says this, Dana says that, he does this. He doesn't pay the fighters enough. The UFC, you know, a lot of credit has to go to UFC how good they actually are. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so let me ask you this last question that I was going to ask you because you end the year with the win over Kelvin. I remember you were so happy. You were emotional afterwards, um, but you were relieved as well because you get the victory in a new weight class. That's at the end of the year, right? November. And now here we are 2020, a year later, almost the end of the year. How would you view 2020? Like, what would you say 2020 has been like for you? Because you haven't won in 2020, but I would argue you're a lot more famous your popularity has skyrocketed thanks in large part to your social media. Um, and you end the year with an injury, but I, I feel like 2020. I've showed, that I, I've showed that I'm one of the elites, the, the last guy I fought, you know what I mean? I'm up there. So, you know, uh, I don't know, what, what, what do you want me to say? Oh, 2020 has been shit because of lockdown and because. No, I, th I actually think it's know, been good for you. I. I, I don't know. I don't really go off years, Ariel. I go off go off days and weeks. And, and to be quite frank with you, Ariel, right, if I go a day without training, I get depressed. So that's how I treat my days. I don't treat me years like anything, you know. Uh, hmm. 
been in fun year. The, the first lockdown was great. The second lockdown, not so great. But who gives a f- I had a great fight with one of the best fighters in the whole world in the UFC, the best organization in the world. There you go. You know, I've had a newborn baby. You know, I love me kids. You know, I, I've moved into a new house. Well, I don't go off years. I just go off days. If there's a day that I don't train, I get sad. So as long as I can train every day apart from Sundays, I'm happy. That's just how I treat it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, Ariel. It's just there. Uh, it's 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 mad that the world right now is just. I don't. I, I don't know what's going on in it. That's why I haven't got an opinion whether COVID exists or doesn't exist, or it's good or it's bad or I, who the f- is that until from Liverpool to comment. This is why. A lot of these people on like Instagram and Twitter just voicing their opinion over anything. And the worst thing about this stuff here is this is why I just laugh is the minute someone disagrees with your opinion, they just throw hate your way and they don't see reason or anything. It's just that guy. I, well, what? I, f- I f- you. I meet you. I just don't get it. I just don't. It's the same as road rage. People get so brave behind the wheel of a car mm. and they're so quick to shout. Like they just don't realize I could just literally pull them out the car. And just dismantle them. I never will because I don't get road rage. I think it's the stupidest thing on earth. It happens few and far between. But same thing goes for social media. Though. People are so quick to disagree and hate. And just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you have to hate them. That's why I don't take it serious. I just I just offend everyone on Twitter, and including you. And the great thing about it, you're smart enough to understand that it's actually not offensive. And even if some, there was some truth in it, so what? Well, with you, it's never any truth. Although what you said uh, wasn't true that you see you don't get road rage, except for when it involves taxi drivers, right? <laughs> Ariel, let's get one thing straight. I don't think I've ever said this to you. It actually wasn't me who robbed the taxi. <laughs> okay. I mean, I got all the blame. There you go, Dad and Till got the blame, but it actually wasn't me. But yeah, road rage with taxi drivers. I should make like a raw dog taxi. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Many well, more great ideas to come for you, Darren. I'll, I'll end this on a, on a high, and I'll end this with a day. I want to wish a big good luck to Perry on Saturday, whether he hates me or not. And if I can't give any, any advice, it is just don't what people think about you. Just do you. Be you. Be 100%. I love it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.